A few weeks back, I recorded videos correcting Marcus Rogers, Chris Yoon and others about false prophecies and false claims they made against God about January 20th and Donald Trump. As I've mentioned, there's three things that uh, is going to happen this week. So again, the three things that have not yet come to pass is that Trump will be reelected. Trump will be reelected. Trump will be reelected. He will have a second term. The second is that God is going to allow some sort of swift justice to come about to to take all the evil and the wickedness out of all the different industries, all the different places that God has um, allowed it to to just uh, happen. The other thing he's going to do that he's shown me is there's going to be some sort of military action. Um, he's shown me that that has to take place. And so those are the three things that have yet to come to pass. And that's going to pass this week. I just said, I, I believe from what God showed me that Trump is going to win. And I stand on that word right now. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! <laughs> Yeah. 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 Whoa. Whoa, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gonna be president. Mickey Mouse is gonna be king. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, in my mind, the mass damage they did to the body of Christ based on these false prophecies and misunderstandings at best were done and dusted. I had obviously done my video, released it, and people could obviously watch the video now and ultimately take the advice I gave them, which was to be more discerning when it comes to listening to people speak, even me. Now, something I've learned along this journey is I need to make sure that my viewers are more prepared. You see, when you know something and you don't say anything, right? God ultimately, in many cases, will hold you accountable. For example, if I say I'm a Bible teacher and I see people misteaching or misusing the Bible, if I don't say anything, God will look at me and say, you know what? You knew this was wrong, but you did not say anything from YouTube's incessant recommendation of Chris Yoon's videos still to this day to me, it would seem that Chris Yoon is still recording videos every single day. Now, I can take that one of two ways considering I have not been watching those videos. Number one, he ultimately sought true repentance and has basically radically changed what he's ultimately saying. Or number two, he has not considered repentance truly and is still continuing to misrepresent and change the narrative. Ultimately, like I said, I've not watched these videos, so who knows where he's ultimately going. I've done my video on him particularly, so I don't really want to say much more about that at this particular time. Now, Marcus Rogers, it seems, has been deleting videos. Was this to cover his tracks? God knows, I guess, right? Because I don't. Now, some of their followers, it seems, have come to my comment section on my videos about these individuals and taken it upon themselves to call me out and call me particular names. Someone said things along the lines of, he's demon possessed, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit, and he's ultimately calling people like Marcus Rogers and Chris Yoon out by name because he's chasing after money. Now, some have even suggested and said, you know what, I should not call out Marcus Rogers explicitly by name because I'm not making videos about other people as well who are apparently false prophets. Now, imagine if I said, you know what, don't stop that crime over there because you cannot stop all of the crime. That literally makes no sense, does it? And when I'm fully funded, it still wouldn't even make sense at that particular time because number one, I do not have all time in the day, ultimately, to just record videos. And number two, I don't get to see everybody's video. So if I don't have unlimited time in the day to just make unlimited amounts of videos, and I do not even get to see everybody's video, how do you expect me to make videos on all different people? That's why we have a body in Christ, which has different parts to do all different things. Speaking of fully funded, if you want to help more people master the Bible and avoid deception, use these links right here and partner with us to help us do so. Now, several times, people have been quoting Matthew 18, 15 and saying to me, Israel, you should have not called these particular people out publicly you should have went with them privately and discussed this matter behind closed doors so the point of today's video is to really look at this passage and break it down so like i said earlier on in today's video i need to make sure that my viewers are prepared 
So first and foremost, let's look at the passage and break this down step by step. The first thing we see here, which is really vital, what does it say? It says, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. And this is vital ultimately because right from the get go, it sets the scene and it sets the context in which Jesus is speaking. Like I said, these people have tried to say to me, you know what? You should have said this publicly. You should have gone to Marcus privately. And based on Matthew 18, 15, this is exactly why. Now, like I just read part of the first line in regards to what we're going to be dealing with today. What did it say? It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against the why is this significant if you think about the pronouns being used jesus said if thy brother trespassed against thee that for those of you who are not familiar with king james language is personal is an individual trespass so first and foremost marcus rogers did not explicitly trespass specifically just against me and the reason I'm specifically talking more so about Marcus Rogers now is because that was generally where the message was ultimately coming from in regards to defense of Marcus Rogers. Ultimately, this could apply to everyone in the world, ultimately, who you may find fault with. But in this particular scenario, Marcus Rogers didn't offend me personally only. He affected and Chris Yoon and all other people, just to not single out Marcus Rogers, affected multiple different people. So the logic that these people are basically using is hundreds of thousands of people if not millions of people who were damaged in the body of christ and even unbelievers who basically were damaged and will not take a second look ultimately at the kingdom because of these scenarios are all individually let's just say christians for example all of these christians hundreds of thousands of people are supposed to go to marcus rogers go to chris Yoon, go to all of these different people one by one privately it makes no sense because that is not the context in which Matthew 18 is ultimately even talking about based on what Jesus is saying. This is talking about a private individual fault between brother and brother. So one person has a fault against another person and it's a private matter. They go together privately. Now, what does it say next? It says, go and tell him his fault between the personal again and him alone so can you see how it's a one-to-one -one thing and it's supposed to be private considering jesus said go alone this scenario which happened a few weeks ago right is not a private issue and it's not a private issue between one and one person we have already talked about the impracticalities of hundreds of thousands of people who were damaged by this particular scenario going individually to people like marcus rogers chris yoon kenneth copeland etc it's impractical and it makes no sense and it doesn't even apply to this particular passage secondly this is again like i said a private matter between two individuals then what did jesus say in the very next line if they will not hear you individually you go now with two or three people so in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word will be established so again can you see how the context of what jesus is saying here is you first go one to one if that individual does not listen to you on a one-to-one -one basis you now take at least two or three other people with you so there's more people to ultimately witness the situation so think about what these followers of marcus rogers and chris yoon and kenneth copeland and all these different people who have been at fault because of january 20th etc want you to do they're saying look these individuals falsely prophesied falsely claimed things about god etc and this did mass damage to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. But they want everyone that's ultimately harmed, apparently, to go one by one when the context of Matthew 18 is not even suggesting this. After taking two or three witnesses and the person not repenting, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen and a publican. So notice what the escalation is. You go one by one, first and foremost, if it's a private matter, then you take other people so they can ultimately be witnesses. And if they still will not listen, then you tell the whole church. So does it look like Chris Yoon, Marcus Rogers, all of these different people speaking to hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people in the build up to January 20th is a private matter? Let's be realistic. It's not. If they are reaching through their videos on an individual basis 50,000 100,000 200,000 in some case 600,000 people on one video talking about something that God is ultimately saying to them is going to happen by January 20th how do you now think this is a private matter between one and one individual 
The last time we just talked about in Matthew 18, what does it say? If they will not listen to the two or three witnesses, then you now tell it to the church. But in the context of what's actually happening with these particular individuals, the whole church pretty much knows of the fault already. The church knows the fault already, so there's no private communication needed. And the fact that people are ultimately trying to bring up this passage indicates to me that I need to teach on it. So for them, they can ultimately know what the Bible says, and for the Bible masters, as I like to call them, we can continue to learn and know to study the Bible contextually and in truth. Despite the fact that I have a live stream now about calling people out by name, one passage I brought up in that particular live stream talks about in Timothy rebuking before all. You can check out that live stream right here and continue to pray that we do not let our emotions or a man or a woman come before God's word.